Okay, mag-umpisa na po tayo, Ma'am Sel. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng mga kasama natin, kasayan sa Mathematics na narito po ngayon sa webinar session natin ngayong umaga na may pamagat na Teaching Science and Mathematics Through Storytelling. Ako po si Michael Anthony Mantala. Bahagi po ako ng Biology Group ng UP Nismed. At makakasama po natin si... Celia Balbin po ng Information Science Group ng UP Nismed. Magandang umaga po. Kami po ang magiging tagapagpadaloy niyo po ngayong umaga sa ating webinar session. Okay, so welcome to Kasama Teachers Community. Kasama Teachers Community, Kasayance and Kamathematics is a professional online community for Filipino K-12 science and mathematics teachers launched by the University of the Philippines National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development or UP NISMED in partnership with Gokong Way Brothers Foundation, GBF. To know more about our platform, please watch this video. Okay, so that's us, Kasama Teachers Community, NISMED, and GBF. Of course, aside from web webinars like what we're doing now, we also continuously develop content and learning resources, such as lesson plans, activities and exercises, as well as assessment and test items, among other things, which could be of help to you as you transition to the new normal in education. Now, how do you register? Just visit www.kasamateachers.ph, which is now flashed on your screen, and sign up for free. This way, you can connect with your co-teachers, connect with Kasama Teachers community. Yeah, nakikita nila okay. Mike no yung ating oh. uh, URL ng website ng ating community. Opo, oh, sign up na po. Sign up na po kayo. Ah, uh, andiyan po. It's free. Mamsal, pakilala na rin po natin ano ang UP Nismed sa mga hindi pa po nakakakilala or nakakapunta sa UP Nismed. UP Nismed is a research and extension unit of the University of the Philippines Diliman whose mandate is to help improve science and mathematics education in the country. Ayan po. Um, yeah, GBF naman. Yan, na din natin, no? Ang um, Gokong Way Brothers Foundation na siya nating partner. GBF Tama, is Ma'am a Sel, no? family okay. foundation. GBF is a family foundation whose core thrust is advancing STEM education. That's uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Believing that this is the driving force towards sustainable national development. That's our partners from Broken Way Brothers Foundation. In 2011, UP NISMED established Kasama Teachers to help teachers during the transition to the K-12 basic education curriculum. In 2019, UP NISMED and GBF partnered to bring an improved one-stop hub for communication, collaboration, learning and development for Filipino K-12 science and mathematics educators. And through the website, kasamateachers.ph, Kasama Teachers provides free quality teaching resources, a platform for sharing best practice and professional development opportunities for all K-12 science and mathematics teachers in the Philippines. Now more than ever, Kasama Teachers Community will continue to bring you relevant and helpful opportunities for professional development and develop learning resources to help you carry out your classes. Kasama nyo po kami, mga kasama. 
Okay, so as we begin today's webinar session, just a few reminders po. If you have questions, just comment with your school and region. We will be collecting your questions so our resource speakers can answer them before the session ends. Feel free to tag your friends, message them, and invite them to join us anytime. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome, Kusama Teachers. You are again joining the Kusama Teachers webinar on teaching science and mathematics mm -hmm. through storytelling. Do you agree that reading and listening to stories can be more fun than reading the usual textbooks? In today's webinar, we are featuring two storybooks from the first volume of Upinis Med Science and Mathematics Stories. One story is on science and it is titled Serenaders of the Countryside by Juanita L. Sassing. And another on mathematics titled Simao Sisang Munting Sisi ni Edna G. Calienta. In today's webinar, its story will be read by our guest storyteller and followed by a discussion about the curriculum connections such as entry points in the content standards and the most essential learning <clears throat> competencies. So, Kasama teachers, are you ready to listen and learn from the stories today? I'm sure Ma'am Cell excited na ang kasama natin na pakinggan ang mga kwento natin ano ngayong umagang ito. Okay, so first let me introduce our guest the storyteller, Miss Marian Sassin. Marian is a third year BS economics student at the University of the Philippines here in Diliman and having always loved children, she became a catechist at the UP Parish of the Holy Sacrifice and continues to volunteer there. Marian entered storytelling training and joined competitions when she was younger. Marian is also the granddaughter of Juanita L. Sassing, the author of one of the stories she will share today. That's all about come. Marian Sassing. All right, so let me introduce now our first story. It is titled Serenaders of the Countryside. The cricket is an interesting animal to study. The sound from that tiny animal makes us wonder how they do it. This story, Serenaders of the Countryside, features the crickets how they produce their chirps, and what that charming chirp is for. It also introduces a practical application of their chirps. All right, so uh, <laughs> let us now welcome Marian Sassing again for the story serenaders of the countryside. Marian, please take it away. Good morning, kids. My name is Ate Marian, and today I will be sharing with you a really great story. But before that, I have a question. Have you ever gone to bed and then suddenly hear this chirping sound? Something like chirp, 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 something like that? Did you know where these chirping sounds came from? Well, today's story is going to help us learn more about that. So are you ready? All right. Okay, so without further ado, I show you our story. Ta-da! It's called Serenaders of the Countryside, written by Juanita El Sassing, who is my Lola, Lola Annie, and illustrated by Leslie E. De Chavez and Mark Joseph J. Harke. Mm. 
We are six boy scouts under the care of Scoutmaster Juan Terrell. Can you guess who among these is Scoutmaster Juan Terrell? Yeah, he's probably this guy with the map, right? One day, we went hiking in the farm of Mr. Terrell's father along the Lobok River. Have you ever gone to the Lobok River? Who among you has gone there? Well, I've been there and it's a really magical place. Let's see what kind of magic they'll find here. When we reached the farm, Mr. Terrell told us to put up our tent. After lunch, the six of us went to look for crickets for bait. We were going to fish in the river early the next morning. Okay, so what did Mr. Terrell ask them to do? They looked for crickets for bait. So they were going to catch fish in the river early the next morning. It was a long and hot afternoon. We put the few crickets that we found in some empty tin cans with cover. Later, we found that there were more crickets in the newly plowed field nearby. That night, the moon rose early. Safe in our tent, Mr. Terrell asked each one of us to tell a story. We enjoyed sharing our stories and we didn't notice it was getting late. We then prepared to sleep after Mr. Terrell shared his story. Everything was peaceful and quiet. Suddenly, we heard the chirping sounds. Chirp, 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 chirp. All six of us asked, what's that? Do you have a guess? Where do you think did those chirping sounds come from? Anyone? All right, let's see if you're right. <gasps> Mr. Terrell, who was also an elementary science teacher said, boys, don't you know that those charming little chirps come from the crickets you caught? <gasps> really? We exclaimed as we hurried to look into our tin cans. Oh, so that's where the chirping sounds came from, the crickets. One of us said, huh? they've stopped chirping. Well, that's because they were disturbed, said Mr. Terrell. Oh, so it looks like when the boys came to look at the crickets, what happened? They stopped chirping. That's right, Very interesting. As we gathered around Mr. Terrell, he continued to say, Crickets are of different kinds. The domestic cricket lives in houses. The nomad cricket is so-called because it transfers its home from place to place. Its color changes when it is alone or in a group. Wow, so it looks like there are different kinds of crickets. There's this domestic cricket that lives in houses. And then there's this really cool nomad cricket that transfers from place to place and even changes its color when it is alone or in a group. Really cool. And then the black crickets of the desert live in groups. The tree cricket has flaring wings. The green forest cricket lives alone, added Mr. Terrell. Oh, so there are even more kinds of crickets. There's this black cricket that lives in the desert and lives in groups. There's the tree cricket with flaring wings and the green forest cricket that lives alone. That's right, wow. How do crickets chirp? I wanted to know. Only the male cricket chirps. The chirping sound comes from the brushing of wings. One of its wing covers has 100 or more tiny ridges. He rubs this with the other wing to produce a chirp like the violin. On a very quiet night, the chirp can sometimes be heard for almost a mile away, answered Mr. Terrell. Oh, so that's where the chirping sounds come from. What kind of crickets chirp? Only the? What does it say here? Only the? Male crickets chirp. Very good. And how do they make the chirping sounds? Through the brushing of wings. That's right. There are these over a hundred tiny little ridges that brush against each other and make sounds like the violin. Okay, have you ever heard the sound of a violin? 
Humangi has heard violin sounds before. Do you think they're similar to cricket chirps? All right, okay. Why does he do it? Someone asked. He chirps because he likes doing it. And also to serenade and attract a lady cricket. Oh, so these male crickets have their own way with the lady crickets, huh? <laughs> Did you know that the male cricket fights it out with every rival for his lady love? Said Mr. Terrell. Wow, so these male crickets must be very persevering and loyal, right? <laughs> really? All of us sighed in awe. Look at these little crickets, they're so cute! <laughs> Female cricket? lays her several eggs, and deposits these at her nursery. One over here. She broods her young under her body, and when the eggs hatch, the tiny young crickets, as small as fleas, start jumping around, continued Mr. Terrell. Wow, so imagine that. Really small baby crickets, as small as fleas, jumping around all over the place. <laughs> Must be really exciting, huh? Do the baby crickets also start chirping? I asked. What do you think the answer to that is? Do you think the baby crickets start chirping? Who says yes? Who says no? <laughs> okay, let's see if you're right, okay? Not yet, mm, answered Mr. Terrell. They begin chirping only when their wings have fully developed. The changes in weather conditions affect the chirps. They chirp faster during a warm weather, explained Mr. Terrell. Oh, so that makes sense, doesn't it? The baby crickets don't make sounds yet, don't chirp yet until their wings have fully developed. Why do you think is that? Do you remember how the chirps are, are created? Through the brushing of wings, that's right, remember? There are over a hundred tiny little ridges that brush against each other and make sounds like the violin. Very good. Okay. Boys, you can also use the chirps of the crickets to get the temperature. If you count the number of chirps in 15 seconds and add 40, you will get the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. The scoutmaster informed us. Oh, that's good for Boy Scouts. We don't have to carry a thermometer, <laughs> exclaimed Nathan, the boy next to me. Whoa, that is really interesting, don't you think? Because with crickets, you don't need a thermometer to tell the temperature. What do you have to do? You just need to count the number of chirps in how many seconds? In 15 seconds, and then add 40. Oh, all right, and then you get the temperature in Degrees Fahrenheit. Mm, that's something new that I didn't know too. Really cool. You're right, Mr. Terrell agreed. Now it's time for you to go to bed. Tomorrow, what will they do? Do you remember? They'll go fishing. That's right. Tomorrow, we'll go fishing, continued Mr. Terrell. As soon as it was dark, the chirping started again. A tiny orchestra lulled us to sleep. It was a soothing sound. As one author puts it, it was a sound of peace, of longing, and a chant of praise for the life every creature enjoys. And that's the story of serenaders of the countryside. So remember, when you go to bed and then hear that chirping sound, you already know where that comes from. You can tell them about the story of serenaders of the countryside. Thank you very much. I hope you like the story. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Marian. Ang husay, Ma'am Sel. <laughs> Ang husay ng pagkakwento mo, Marian, ano? sa isang napakahusay din na kwento. Ma'am Sel, that's a lot of biology. A lot of biology was covered in that very simple and yet very elegant uh, story. Tama, hindi ko sukat tatalain. We can find science pala in storybooks. Exactly, Ma'am Sela. No? Um, ang ganda ng paghahambing ni Marian ano, sa 
uh, yung brushing ano, ng wings ng cricket sa pag-play play ng violin. Nice. At napakasal, alam mo ba? Yeah, alam mo ba, Ma'am Sel, na bawat cricket ay nakakaproduce ng kanyang signature sound? Ah, bago yan. Idadagdag natin sa kwento yan. <laughs> Oo, idadagdag natin yan. No? Kung baga parang um, alam ng female cricket kung sino sa mga male crickets ang may ganitong chirp. Kasi bawat male cricket ay may signature chirp. Wow. May ganun uh, pala. No? Kanina nalaman ko lang sa kwento na yung uh, mga male crickets lang ang nag-chirp, ang nag-produce ng chirping sounds. No? Uh, ngayon, meron pala sila. Kaya tamang-tama, Ma'am Sal. Ano? Oo, tamang-tama, Ma'am Sal, yung paghahambing sa uh, violin. Ano? Kasi uh, iba-iba rin talaga ang mga... Baga parang kung nakikinig ka ng violin, malalaman mo kung sino halimbawa ang naglalaro ng violin na nasa tempo halimbawa ni David Garrett or nasa uh, rhythm halimbawa ni Vanessa May or ni Anna Kiko Mayers. Iba-iba rin. Ayan. Tapos, um, ang tawag dun sa brushing ng wings, ayan, dagdag sa vocabulary natin, ang tawag dyan ay stridulation. Ano spelling nun, Mike? Ah, okay. S-T-R-I, stridulation. S-T-R-I, B-U-L-A, T-I. Stridulation. S-T-R-I, B-U-L-A, T-I-O-M. Maybe before we go on to the next part, the second part of this particular storytelling session, we would like to get comments from our attendees, our participants. What do you think of uh, the just concluded storytelling serenaders of the countryside done by Mayan Sassi? Any comments, anyone? Please feel free to type in the comment box on our Facebook page. Oh, we like the story. Yeah. Okay, everyone, I have a good news for you. Stay on until the end. Fill up our evaluation form to get the chance to win a copy, not just of the Serenaders or the other storybook that we are going to feature today, but the entire first volume of the Science and Mathematics Stories published by UP Nismed. So stay on, everyone. Hang on there. Or well, any one of you has used uh, storytelling as a strategy to teach science in your class? Yeah, we see some people typing some more comments here on the on the comment <clears throat> box. Ah, the storyteller, though, is a great factor, sabi ni Sir uh, Pidot Aureano. The story is a true reflection of the countryside. Life full of biodiversity, such as the crickets. Tama po. Oo. Okay, so now everyone... Now that we have enjoyed uh, the storytelling session, it is time to look at it from the perspective of a teacher or a parent uh, here to provide some curriculum connections to our story serenaders of the countryside is Miss Dulce Sebastian. Uh, Miss Maria Dulcelina Sebastian is a graduate of BS Biology from the University of San Agustin in Iloilo and holds a master's degree in biology education from UP Diliman. As a science education specialist of UP Nismed, Dulce has been involved in curriculum development as author, writer, in teacher professional development as trainer, and in research as well as in public service initiatives of the institute and the college 
here to share with us some curriculum connections for serenaders of the countryside. Let us all welcome Miss Dulce Sebastian. Oh, Take it thank away, you. Mandos. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Miss Alia. Yes, that was a great story about the serenaders of the countryside, the cricket. Kuligli, the adult Kamaru in Kapampangan, or the Sirum Sirum for the Karaya speaking people. Okay. And thank you, Marian, for telling us the story. Many have said it was amazing. Okay. So, first, if we address the parents, I hope there are parents attending this or listening to this uh, uh, event. For the younger children, this story is from kids aged 7 to 10. Okay? And for teachers, the story can be used as a supplementary material for teaching about animals. Now, during this time of the pandemic, when there is no face-to-face -face classes, we know very well, teachers, that the pet has come up with the most essential learning competencies that we will take a look okay, at. In terms of curriculum connections or curriculum entry points, we'd like to, we'd like to take a look at that part for grade three, second quarter, week two. For content standard, its parts and functions of animals and importance to humans. Now, when we talk about the competencies, these are the skills that we want students to develop as they learn about the subject area. Okay, so the most, one of the most essential learning competencies that is, um, embedded in this content standard is for students to describe animals in their immediate surroundings. Okay. Nakikita po ninyo yung nasa right side na photo. Okay. Parte po ito ng uh, hard copy ng material na kinwento sa atin ni Marian. So, how then would students be able to comply with these competencies? It says there, Later, they found that there were more crickets in the newly plowed field nearby. Now, if you get to hold this book, the page preceding this would show you kids, yung Boy Scouts, na nakaluhod sa lupa and trying to look for crickets. So, with this story, malalaman ng mga bata saan nila makikita ang crickets, Ano yung kanila mga characteristics? At saka, sa ang ibang lugar pa, pwede makita yung crickets. Okay? At saka, ano yung mga parts niya sa kanyang body na pwede uh, tumulong sa kanya para siya makatira dun sa lugar niya. Okay? Which we will discuss also later. So, this is just one competency, you know, uh, for grade 3. Now, we move on to the next part. Uh, the, this is still for grade three, still second quarter week two. The content standard is still parts and functions of animals and their importance to humans. Pero ito, may isa na tayong bagong ibang competency na nakapaloob dun sa curriculum na yun, which is for students to identify the external parts and functions of the animals. Okay. What can you remember? about any part, about the chirping part of crickets. Can you identify the part which is responsible for it? So there you go. Di po ba sinasabi that the chirping is due or is produced by the rubbing of their wings? No? So para sa ano po ba ito? Anong purpose ng part na yon? Anong purpose ng action na yon? The brushing of the wings. Wing, wings, rather. Okay. So, it says there,
the cherubing comes from the wings of the crickets. Di po ba? So, para sa ano po ba? It is said, so ito po nakalagay, why does he do it? He chirps because he likes doing it. And also to serenade and attract a lady cricket. Great! Sabi nga ni Marion kanina, namangha din siya, no? And did you know also that the male cricket fights it out with every rival for his lady lad? Ah, oh, galing! Okay. So, wings, ang external part na identify nila, at saka kung ano ang function of this part of the cricket. Okay. Now, may isa pa. The story says that Okay, it has also a function in as an indicator for the temperature of our surroundings. May sinasabi nga si Marian kanina na kinikwento that if you count the number of chirps in 15 seconds and add 40, you will get the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so may isa pang factor dito, may isa pa rin integration dito ng math. Because in math, the math teachers also teach students in converting degrees Fahrenheit into degrees centigrade. You remember that, math, math teachers? So that's integration of the science concepts into the math concepts. Okay, what's next for us? There you go. Pwede rin siya sa grade 4, second quarter, week 2. Okay, the content standard is animals have body parts that makes them adapt to land or water. And the most one of the most essential learning competencies referred to here is that for students to infer that body structures help animals adapt and survive in their particular habitat. What do you remember about the different kinds of crickets that Mr. Terror told the Boy Scouts? Okay, so there's a picture sa right side, makikita po natin. Si kinikwento ni, ni, ni Sir Terrell that there are black crickets, that there's the tree cricket. And importante ito, makikita po natin, the tree cricket has flaring wings. Okay, bakit kaya? Tree crickets. Pwede silang lumipad sa itaas. Okay, so my body structure na wings, flaring wings, okay? And for them to be able to survive and live in such a particular habitat, kailangan flaring ang mga wings. Okay? And there's another one. The, no, the, the, the domestic cricket must have some structures that will make them adapt to living in people's houses. There's another one. The nomad cricket is so cold because it transfers its home from place to place. And very... Um, Important, important thing, its color changes when it is alone or in the group. Okay? I hope that's clear. And then, next slide, please. Ha, ah, hanggang grade 5, mayroon pa. In still the second quarter and week 2, iba na ang content standard. The content standard is for students to learn about how animals reproduce. And one of the most essential learning competencies is for them to describe the different modes of reproduction in animals, like butterflies, mosquitoes, frogs, cats, and dogs. But wait a minute. But nawala ang cricket. So sabi natin dun sa K to 12 and all in, and in all the curriculum uh, that that we ha we have you no know, for all the schools, that is. Nung hindi tayo sa pandemic, tawag natin na minimum learning competency. So kung minimum, dapat ito mayroon sila. So pwede ba magdagdag? Yes. So now, in the most essential learning competencies that Ed, that Ed has come up with, pwede na natin madagdag dyan. Frogs, cats, dogs, and crickets. Di po ba? Okay. So, no one to me, bucket emphasis on mosquitoes, kasi because of dengue. Frogs, nakikita sa paligid, 
cats, siyempre sa ating mga baybay sa komunidad, and of course with the dogs. And now, may addition tayo crickets. This is precise, this is very much a reality in the countryside. Sa mga probinsya natin, sa farms natin. Okay? So, how would, how would they be able to know about the different modes of reproduction in animals dito sa kwento na to? So, dyan sa picture, makikita mo, the female cricket lays several eggs and deposits these at her nursery. So, kumpara mo siya, how do, uh, paano mag-reproduce, through what ways mag-reproduce ang cats, dogs, mosquitoes, or butterflies with crickets. So, masasagot ng mga bata, hindi po ba? So, that's as far as the grade 5, second quarter, week 2, connection with our story. Okay. So, nakita na natin, no? Yung mga pwedeng connections. Now, mga patikim lang yon. Yun ang mga nakikita natin. Baka kayo din po ay pwedeng makakita pa ng iba. So, most probably after this um, this activity, pwede din nyo po, science, elementary science teachers, math teachers, you can, you can take a look again at the competencies and, and then um, remember the different parts of the stories wherein you can use storytelling to teach those concepts. Okay po ba? Okay, so we move on. Now, nalaman na natin saan yung mga connections of this, pwede makonect pala, yung itong story sa parts ng ating curriculum. Now, I would like you, we would like you to reflect and to think more about, it's your turn, about the following. Dalawa lang po. Pwede niyong dagdagan later on. What do you think makes storytelling effective as a teaching strategy? Napakinggan niyo yung istorya, napakinggan niyo yung napakinggan niyo yung <clears throat> yung connections saan natin makoconnect saan natin ma-apply sa part ng curriculum you can you can type in uh, your uh, answers or your thoughts in our comments section no on the the uh, uh, right side of our um, screen and secondly has something and that second question rather has something to do with how now do we assess if our students have learned about the concepts that we would want them to learn? Okay. Do you allow learners to demonstrate what they know using these stories? So, other than just asking them, anong parte ng cricket ang nagpuputus ng chirp? Or, other simple questions that we can ask them. Pwede kaya na ma-assess natin kung natuto ba yung ating mga kids na tinuruan natin through the story kung sila ay maritel nila itong story na to to their siblings, to their younger siblings, to their parents, or to their friends. Di po ba? Okay. So, siguro sa mga parents, no, ito lang ang tip. Dati-rate, ako parang nainis ako nung hindi pa ako professional, nung hindi pa ako nagde-develop ng mga materials, nung hindi pa ako nagsusulat ng mga libro. Talagang parang, hmm, ano ba to? Sa gabi, after ng klase, tapos ng klase, nag-answer na ako ng test, nagsumagot ako sa teacher, tatanungin pa ng tatay ko, oh, anong nangyari sa inyong klase kanina? Anong pinag-aralan ninyo? So, in the same math, sabi ko, ay, may silbi pala yun. No? So, parents, you can also do that. Ask your children from time to time. And with the, during this time of the pandemic, di ba, mayroon tayong mga portfolio na pwede ma-share natin sa ating teachers na, ay, naku, ma'am, yung anak ko, kinuha to sa atin na ganito pala yung kanilang natin. Okay? So, that's all for this time. Pwede pa tayong maraming gagawin. Thank you very much for attending this um, storytelling event of Kasama Teachers. Okay. And sa mga hindi pa po nagpapa-member sa Kasama Teachers, okay, there's a lot more. Maraming salamat and good day wherever you are.
Pwede pala ganun yun, Mike, ano? Hindi lang pakikinig at pagbabasa ng kwento. Pwede talagang maghanap ng science doon sa kwento ng Sari Maders. At pwede palang magamit yung storytelling ng teacher sa pagtuturo. Pero doon sa perspective na ni share ni Dulce sa atin, ano? Pwede rin palang gamitin ng mga bata sa pagpapakita kung ano na yung natutunan nila, kung ano man yung uh, pinag-aralan nila sa klase. So, pwede siya, no? As an assessment test strategy din. Galing. Okay. So, let's now move on to our next story. And uh, I would like to introduce our next story. All right, our next story is uh, titled Si Mausisang Munting Sisil. Ayan. And uh, the author of uh, this story is also with us today and we are lucky to have uh, the author with us today uh, before i introduce the author let me just quickly give an overview of the story itself uh si mausi sang munting sisi or the curious little chick is a story about a chick whose curiosity leads him to discover that different animals have different numbers of legs. The numbers of legs of the animals that have been mentioned always come in pairs and that they can be counted by twos. This particular story highlights skip counting and repeated addition, which are some of the prerequisite skills for learning the concept of multiplication. All right, so let me quickly introduce or let's get to know a little bit more the writer, the author of this story, The Curious Little Chick, Miss Edna Calienta. Edna is uh, currently science education specialist at the University of the Philippines National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education and Development. She is also the chair of the elementary school mathematics group. Edna finished both her Bachelor of Elementary Education and her Master of Arts in Education major in elementary mathematics at the College of Education here in UP Diliman. Before joining NISMED, she taught math for three years at the University of the Philippines Integrated School. Knowing the value of reading short stories to children, she tried her luck at writing Si Mausisang Munting Sisi. This morning, Edna will also walk us through the important curriculum connections of the story that she wrote. Let us again welcome Miss Edna Calienta and welcome back also, our storyteller, Marianne Sassing, for the actual Take storytelling. Take it away, Marianne. Okay, so magandang umaga, mga bata. Ako si Ate Marianne, at meron akong maganda yung kakwento sa inyo ngayon. Pero bago yun, sino sa inyo dito ang magaling magbilang? Tapos kamay. Ba? Okay, sinong magaling magbilang kaya magbilang mula isa? Hanggang apat. O di kaya isa. Hanggang sampu. Wow, okay. Nako. Sigurado ko magugustuhan ninyo itong kwento natin ngayon. Dahil magsasanay tayo kung paano magbilang. Okay? Handa na ba kayo? Okay, sige. Ang kwento natin ngayong umaga ay... Tada! Si Mausisang Munting Sisiu. Akda ni Edna G. Calianta at guhit ni Aaron M. Romero. Mausisang munting sisyo. Tingin nyo, bakit kaya 
mausisa. Si Munting Sisiw. Anong ibig sabihin ng mausisa? Ibig sabihin ng mausisa ay maraming tanong, matanong. No? Tingnan natin kung bakit kaya mausisa si Munting Sisiw. Okay? Mahilig maglalakad at magtatatalon si Munting Sisiw. Isang araw, nasabit ang kanyang kanang paa sa mga tuyong sanga ng punong kahoy. Ako, kawawa naman si Munting Sisiw. Tingnan niyo, oh. Kawawa naman. Ayan. Masakit ito, kaya't hindi niya ito mailakad. Nalulungkot siya dahil hindi siya makapaglaro. Umupo siya at pinanood ang kanyang mga kaibigan habang naglalakad, nagtatatalon, at palarong naglululukso ang mga ito. Ako, kawawa naman to si Munting Sisiw. Naisip ni Munting Sisiw na, Hmm, may tigtadalawang paa silang lahat. Isa, dalawa, isa, dalawa. May dalawang paa rin ako. Ngunit, hindi ko magamit ang isa. May dalawang paa siya. Ngunit hindi niya magamit ang isa. Hindi ako makapaglakad. Kailangan ko ang aking dalawang paa sa paglalakad. Ayan, so ilan ang paa ni Munting Sisiw ulit? Mayroon siya dalawang paa. Kayo, ilan ang mga paa ninyo? Bilangin nyo nga, isa at dalawa. Tama, meron din kayong dalawang paa. Okay. Sa bahay, hinanap niya ang kanyang ina. Inay, may dalawa kong paa tulad po ninyo ni Itay. Tingnan ninyo, isa, dalawa. Sabi niya na nakaturo sa kanyang mga paa. At, ginamit, at ginagamit natin ang ating mga paa sa paglalakad. Patuloy niya. Inay, may dalawang paa ba ang lahat ng nagkakalakad? Tingin ninyo, anong sagot sa tanong ni Munting Sisiw? May dalawang paa ba ang lahat na nakakalakad? Sinong tingin, oo. Mm, sinong tingin, ay hindi, 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 hindi. Okay, tingnan natin kung tama ang sagot ninyo. Ah. Umiti ang kanyang ina at nagsabi, Bakit hindi mo alamin? Alam kong matalino ka at masasagot mo ang iyong katanungan. Okay, Tingnan natin kung masasagot nga ni Munting Sisiw ang kanyang tanong, okay? Nang gumaling na ang kanyang paa, lumabas ng bahay si Munting Sisiw at tinawag ang kaibigan niyang si Bantay. Sinabi niya kay Bantay na mayroon siyang dalawang paa. Ilan ang iyong mga paa? Tanong niya kay Bantay. Apo, ang mga paa ko. Sagot ni Bantay. Pwede niyo bang ituro kung nasan dito si Bantay? Asan siya dito? Ayun! At anong uri ng hayop si Bantay? Isa siya? Aso! Tama! Anong tunog ng aso? Ruff! Ruff! Ayun! Okay, mausay! Ilan daw ang paa ni Bantay? Pwede niyo bang bilangin? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat! Okay! Apat ang mga paa ko. Sabi ni Bantay. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. Bilang ni Munting Sisiw. Nako, Bantay, apat ang mga paa mo? Bulalas niya. Siyempre, apat ang mga paa ko. Tingnan mo. Dalawa, apat. Dalawa at dalawa o dalawang tigda dalawa. Apat. Patuloy niya. Ano nga ulit ang sinabi ni Bantay? Ilan ang mga paa niya? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. Dalawa at dalawa. O dalawang tig da dalawa. Isa, dalawa, dalawang tig da dalawa. Apat ang mga paa ni Bantay. Naku, ang dami. <laughs> Sa katuwaan, Tumakbo si Munting Sisiw sa halamang tinitirhan ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. Tao po! Tao po! Ginoong sa Lagubang! Dalawa mga pa ako, samantalang 
apat ang kay bantay. Sabi niya, Kayo po, ilan ang inyong mga paa? Tanong ni Munting Sisiyo. Nakikita niyo ba dito si Ginoong sa Lagubang? Asan siya dito? Ayun. O ilan kaya ang mga paa niya? Okay, tingnan natin ah. Anim. Mausisang Munting Sisiyo. Sagot ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. <gasps> Anim! Bulalas ni Munting Sisiyo. Tulungan niya natin bilangin ang mga paa ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim. Anim nga. Oh, dami. Oo, anim ang mga paa ko. Pagmamalaking sabi ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. Dalawa, apat, anim. Tugtong pa niya. Dahil sa mausisa siya, binilang niya ulit. Dalawa at dalawa at dalawa. <gasps> Tatlong tigda dalawa. Anim. Anim na ang iyong mga paa. Oh, okay, so ilang ilan ang paa ulit na ginoong sa Lagubang? Mayroon siyang anim na mga paa. Dalawa at dalawa at dalawa. Isa, dalawa. Tatlong tigda dalawa. Anim ang mga paa ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. Oh, ang dami namang paa ni Ginoong sa Lagubang. Habang naglalakad si Munting Sisiu patungo sa puno, sinasabi niya sa kanyang sarili, Hmm, dalawa ang mga paa ko, apat kay Bantay, at anim kay Ginoong sa Lagubang. Pagkatapos, nakita niya si Sino kaya nakita niya? Laan niyo? Ayun! Si Binibining Gagamba! Dali-dali niya itong nilapitan. Binibining Gagamba! Dalawang mga pa ako. Nalaman kong ang mga paa ni Bantay ay apat at anim naman kay Ginoong sa Lagubang. At kayo'y may isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, Anim? Pito? Walo? Walo po ang mga paa ninyo? Pagtatanong niya. Ko, oh, ang dami, mas madami pang paa. Si Binibining Gagamba. Oo, walo ang mga paa ko. Tingnan mo. Dalawa? Apat? Anim at walo? Sagot ni Binibining Gagamba. Dalawa? At dalawa, at dalawa, at dalawa. Apat na tigda dalawa. Walo! Walo ang inyong mga paa! Sabi ni Munting Sisiyo. Ilan daw ulit ang mga paa ni Binibining Gagamba? Madami, di ba? Merong walong mga paa. Dalawa, at dalawa, at dalawa, at dalawa. Isa, dalawa, tatlo... Apat na tigda dalawa. Dalawa, apat, anim, at walo. Walong mga paa. Oh, ang dami nun ah. Yan. At dahil nasagot niya ang kanyang talong, masaya siyang umuwi sa kanilang tahanan para sabihin ito sa kanyang ina. Yan. At dyan nagtatapos ang ating kwentong si Mausisang Munting Sisiu na akda ni Edna G. Calianta at kuwit ni Aaron M. Romero. So tingin niyo, nasagot ba ni Munting Sisiu ang uh, tanong niya sa simula? Anong tanong niya? Kung meron bang dalawang paa ang lahat na nakakalakad, ano kaya ang sagot doon? Ano sa tingin niyo? Okay, hindi. Meron palang iba-ibang bilang ng mga paa ang lahat na nakakalakad. Merong dalawa tulad ng kay Munting Sisiu at sa ating mga tao, mayroon ding apat tulad ng kanino? Kay Bantay. Mayroon ding anim tulad ng kay Ginoong sa Lagubang. At mayroon ding walo na tulad ng kay Binibining Gagamba. Ayan. Kaya mga bata, tandaan natin, mahalagang maging mausisa. Magtanong, bakit, bakit, bakit? At maging tulad ni Mausisang Munting Sisiu. Okay, maraming salamat!
Wow! Ang galing! Well, Maraming salamat, Marian. No? No? Thank you very oh. much, Marian. Wow. Maraming salamat, Marian, sa pagbabahagi mo ano, ng napakahusay, ano, na pagbabahagi na mahusay din ano, na kwento ni uh, Miss Edna Calianta. Ayan, kasama na natin ang author ano, ng uh, kwento na ibinahagi sa atin ni Marian. Maraming salamat, Marian. At ngayon, tignan naman natin no, ang tinatawag nating curriculum connections nitong kwento ni si Mausisang Munting Sisiu. Uh, ibabalik namin sa inyo ulit ang author-writer nitong kwentong ito na siyang magbibigay ng curriculum connections for the story. Again, friends, kasama teachers, let's welcome back Miss Edna Calianta. Uh, magandang umaga po sa mga kasama teachers at sa lahat po na nakikinig at nanonood sa atin ngayon. So the story po is about a little chick who is very curious. And uh, because of this curiosity, um, he was able to, to find, to learn something. And that is, not all animals that walk have two legs. Uh, some have uh, uh, four six and or eight legs and uh, in finding out the answer to this to his question he used um para concepts and skills in mathematics and this time let us find out what are these concepts and skills okay one is accounting uh, at first um, he counted the number of legs of the animals by ones. So for the dog, he counted the number of legs of the dogs, one, two, three, four. For um, Mr. Bittle or Ginoong Salagubang, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then for Miss Spider or si Binibining Gagamba, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, nakita rin natin na nagbasa siya naman ng by two. Ah, nagbilang siya by twos. So, for um, bantay, nagbilang siya ng two, four. So, kinount niya ang number of legs ni bantay by twos. At kay Mr. Salagubang, binilang niya ng Two, four, six. At um, kay binibining kagamban, binilang niya ng two, four, six, eight. So let's skip count siya. Yung sinasabi natin counting by twos is actually skip counting by twos. And then, siya ay gumamit din ng repeated addition. Saan niya ginamit ang repeated addition? Samantalang wala naman siyang sinabing plus plus. Or 2 plus 2 equals 4. Wala namang ganon. Pero ito'y pinapakita sa pamamagitan ng pagsabi niya ng 2 and 2 or 2 twos is 4. 2 and 2 and 2 is 6. 2 and 2 and 2, and 2 is 8. Okay? So, ipinakita niya yan, sa pagbibilang na yan, sa mga paa ni Bantay, ni um, Ginoong, ni Mr. Bittle, at ni Miss Sp Spider. Okay? Now, ang mga skills and concepts na counting, skip counting, forming groups having the same number of objects. In this case, yung bang pag, pagbilang ng um, mga paan ng mga animals by twos or in pairs. At ang repeated addition ay mga prerequisite skills and concepts for the additive approach 
to multiplication. Okay, ngayon. Yung mga um, concepts na yan ay itinuturo, karamihan dyan itunturo sa grade 1. Hindi ba? Ang counting as early as kinder or even before children come to school, nagka-count na sila. Skip counting is taught in grade 1. Yung forming sets is taught in even in kinder in grade 1. And repeated addition also is taught in grade 1. And then, so if this is a prerequisite skill, so saan kaya siya level na pwede? So, this can be used as in grade 2 and it can be used as springboard to the teaching of multiplication. And what are the competencies? that um, can be addressed by this. Yung illustrates multiplication as repeated addition using groups of equal quantities and writes a related equation for repeated addition. Okay? So if, paano kaya yon? So paano kaya natin siyang gagamitin to introduce, let's say, multiplication? Okay. Remember na binilang ang paa ni Bantay ng 2 and 2 is 4. So we can represent that as 2 plus 2 equals 4 in addition. But then 2 plus 2 equals 4 means that there are 2 groups of 2. And that is can be written also as 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay po? Pagdating naman po kay uh, Mr. Bittle or Ginoong sa Lagupang, binilang na rin po siya, hindi po ba, ng 2, 2, and 2, and 2 is 6. So, isusulat po natin to sa repeated addition. So, ay magiging 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 8. Or meron kayong tatlong grupo ng tag at tig na dalawa. And this can be represented in multiplication form as 3 groups of 2 or 3 times 2 equals 6. Okay po? Ngayon. Pagdating naman po kay... Miss Spider or Binibining sa Lagubang, binilang po ang kanyang mga paan ng 2 and 2 and 2 and 2. Apat na ba yun? Is 8. Nawala ako sa aking pagbibilang. Okay po. So, isusulat po natin ito. Sa, sa addition sentence, you have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 8. Or, dahil meron po tayong apat na grupo ng tagdadalawa, maaari po itong isulat sa multiplication sentence na 4 groups of 2 equals 8. Okay po, ngayon. Ay, sandali lang. Ah, uh, paano naman po ang kay, kay, kay Munting Sisiw? Meron siyang dalawang paa. So, si Munting Sisiw po ay mayroong one, isang grupo ng dalawang paa. On one group of two legs. And it can be written as one times two equals two. Okay po. O ngayon, eh, ganun lang ba? Pwede bang bilangin ang mga paa nitong mga uh, animals na ito? Doon lang sa pinakita natin, meron bang ibang paraan pa ng pagbibilang? Meron pa. Tignan natin ito. Okay? 
kaibang tay. Kung titingnan natin ang paa ni Bantay sa kaliwang bahagi ng kanyang katawan at sa kanyang kanang bahagi ng kanyang katawan, makikita na meron ding tag da dalawa. So ang ibig sabihin, meron ding two groups of two or two plus two equals four, which can be also be written as two times two equals four. Hindi po ba? So, pwede rin po yun. So, 2 times 2 equals 4. Pagdating naman po kay ginoong sa lagubang, yun, tama pa rin ba ang 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6? Or 3 groups of 2 equals 6. I 6, kung titignan po natin ang bilang ng kanyang mga paa, sa ba kanang bahagi ng kanyang katawan at sa kaliwang bahagi ng kanyang katawan. Pareho pa ba? Pwede pa ba iyong gamitin? Hindi na po. Dahil sa pagkakataon po na to, ginrupo na po natin siya na mayroong dalawang grupo na ang bawat grupo ay mayroong tatlong legs. Okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng 2, ah sorry, 3, and 3 is 6. Or 3 plus 3 equals 6, or 2 times 3 equals 6. Nang ibig sabihin po, meron dalawang grupo ng tag sa tatlo. Okay? Pagdating naman po kay Miss Spider, Tignan po natin. Ah, yan po. Kung titignan po natin ang mga bilang ng kanyang paa sa kaliwang bahagi ng kanyang katawan at sa kanang bahagi ng katawan, ang 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 8 or 4 times 2 equals 8 ay pwede pa kaya natin gamitin? Kung, kung yan ang representation na po. So, Mas maganda po kung ito ay i-represent ire natin ng 4 plus 4. May dalawang grupo ng tag-aapat. Or sa multiplication, kung isusulat po natin sa multiplication sentence, ito po ay 2 times 4 equals 8. Okay po. Now, so, ano po ba ang dapat na i-highlight natin dito sa ating akwento at sa paggamit po natin nitong, nitong The Curious Little Chick or sa mausisang munting sisiyo sa pagtuturo po o sa, uh, using a springboard or to introduce the concept of uh, multiplication that we are adding equal groups together. And that's why we have the same addend when we do repeated addition. Okay? And then, uh, if the same number is added repeatedly, then we can write this in the form of multiplication. So, yan po yung dapat natin i-highlight. So, masusulat po natin siya sa multiplication, uh, in, in multiplication form, kung nag add po tayo repeatedly ng the same number. Okay po, yun po. Um, iniisip ko po ano, so, kung sakali na, ay, paano naman sa side ng mga bata? Paano natin kaya mabibigyan sila ng activity, let's say, o grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, kasi I'm sure that you can still use this not only to introduce the concept of multiplication. I think you can still use this in other, in other subject area, in other, in science probably, or in other topics in, in mathematics. Now, let's say for this one, how can you make the students relate the, uh, provide an activity to the students wherein they can make use of what they, the, the, the story in the Curious Little Chick and the concept of multiplication. So, anong activity kaya? I know that you can think of a lot of activities. 
but now probably what what i can think of right now is uh, uh siguro you can you can make the students uh, think of an animal probably of uh, their pet uh, or something that they want to be or an animal that they want to be as a pet and then you let them draw this pet better if you can show the fit of this uh, of this pet of this animal so baka sabihin nila ma ma'am um tunay po bang hayop Ma'am, pwede po ba yung nasa isip ko lang? O sige, allow kaya natin para yung imagination ng mga bata ay ma-enhance. Ma so baka meron diyang ilang ilang legs ng mga animals na hindi natin makita. Sige nga, tingnan nga natin. And then, you let them write, uh, you represent the number of legs of these animals. Whether as repeated addition, whether as in... Uh, uh, they write multiplication sentence or or uh, addition sentence to represent the number of legs of the animals so that would be one activity so their creativity will be enhanced okay so that will be done and then you can use their their um outputs their drawings to explain further the meaning of uh, uh, multiplication or what multiplication means okay Paul. Um, I'm sure that um, you can think of some more topics in uh, in uh, in math uh, or even in science or even in other subjects. Probably sa environment. What are the people around the environment and social studies? Probably. So, pwede rin siyang gamitin. So, marami po siguro sa palagay ko na pwede po gamitin itong curious little check. Not only in mathematics. So, teachers, mas alam niyo po siguro yun kasi po kayo nagtuturo ng mas marami. Lalo na po yung mga nasa kinder to grade 3 kasi po self-contained po, hindi po ba ang pagtuturo. So, yun lang po. Um, marami pong salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Po, thank you. Thank you, Edna. Teacher Edna. Maraming salamat, Edna. Ang galing ng integration na yun, ano, sa storytelling, integration ng math, ano, mga math concepts sa storytelling. Ang linaw. Napakalinaw. Right. Parang nag-umpisa dun sa numbers, dun sa counting, dun sa skip, ano yun? Skip counting, dun sa repeated addition, bago ginawa yung kwento. Parang ganun. Tama. Kung na, ano? <laughs> Ang Tapos nung kwento na, napaka-seamless po, Ma'am Sela, no? Oo. Ang galing. Ang isang nakita kong magandang point din na nasabi din kanina ni Edna ay yung character ng isang mausisang bata. No? Mausisang. <laughs> tama, Sinsi, tama. Mausisang bata. Hindi pala talaga sila pinipigilan na mag-usisa, no? At saka i-encourage na uh, hanapin ang sagot dun sa kanila mismo mga tinatanong. Kaya pala, no? Kaya palang i-interrogate silang gano'n. Hindi dapat pinipigilan yung mga batang tanong ng tanong ng bakit? Pag nasagot mo na yung unang bakit, bakit na naman dun sa itat, sa, sa isinasagot, no? I think that's, that's very important, itong, itong habit of mind, no? Of asking questions. Ay napaka-importante rin na suportahan talaga uh, hindi lang sa math, kundi sa science, at saka sa iba't iba pang mga subject areas, no, na integrate Mike, meron na pong, oh, yes, Ed. Oo, siguro ang maganda lang, if you have stories for children na yung bang, na nagiging accessible ang math concept sa mga bata. Kasi if they have a storybook, tapos may math content, so, naging accessible yung, yung math sa kanila. Mm. So, just like yun one, yung counting, nagiging, na, nakikita tuloy nila sa mga libro. Okay? And then, Magand um, oh, magandang na-point out mo, uh, Edna, no? kasi marami sa mga bata, for some reason, na-threaten sa math, ano? Pag sinabing math, naku, ang hirap-hirap ng math. Et, et. Numbers. Pag kahalimbawa, oo, oh, oo. Oh. Kapag kahalimbawa yung teacher, binanggit na sa mga bata, ngayon class, ako ay magkukwento. Imagine how 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 oh, friendly oh. that would be. Ano? Uh, Parang naisip ko ngayon-ngayon lang, Mike, habang sinasabi mo yun, palagi natin na-associate kasi 
yung math sa numbers. Pwede rin palang i-associate exactly. ng math uh, sa story at sa language. Di ba? At kapakahusay po ng association na nangyari ngayong mm-hmm. araw na ito, Ma'am Sela, no? Ng math mm-hmm. sa isang story. Ang, ang isa ding maganda dito sa storybook na ginawa sa Miss Med ay bawat isang kwento merong English at saka Filipino dun sa parehong page. Yung isang page na yun, uh, kanina una nakita, narinig ninyo si Maria, no? yung Serenaders of the Countryside. Ang binasa niyang version nun ay English, pero the same book dun sa ilalim, o kaya sa taas, maminsan pabalik-palit, papalik-palit, no? pero most of the time, dun sa serenaders, nasa ibaba yung Filipino. So, pwedeng basahin in Filipino yung the same story. Ganun din itong si uh, the curious little chick, no? si mausisang munting sisi. Parang magandang ano siya, no? tang twister, mausisang munting sisi. <laughs> uh, may ganun din, kada kwento may English version at Filipino on the same page. Lahat po ng mga stories. Uh-oh. Opo, bukod dyan, Ma'am Sela, no? itong mga stories na ito ay kinakitaan din natin ano, ng opportunidad for articulation across disciplines. Um, sabi ni Mavic, ano, uh, pwede rin daw gamitin yung stories sa classification of animals in science. Tama oh, po oh, yun, Ma'am Mavic. Tama, tama, tama. Yung pwedeng pag pagkahalu-haluin uh, talaga no at may nakita akong isang comment dito kanina ng isang teacher participant natin na sinasabi niya gusto niya kasi nga merong science ay merong Filipino at meron din English yung magagamit niya sa pagtuturo sa English no ang isang magandang point din dito ay again makikita natin yung role ng language no Uh, sa pagtuturo o sa pag-aaral tungkol sa science o tungkol sa, sa mathematics. No? Uh, baka siguro sa susunod nating mga storytelling sessions ay mag din tayo ng mga Filipino teacher at saka English teacher no? na siya namang mag-offer ng mga connections dun sa kanilang mga, mga competencies no? or content standards dito sa mga iba pang subjects na ito. Naalala ko nung mga few decades ago na uso yung sinasabi nilang writing across the curriculum no so at uh, saka sa science na uso din yung written projects no or written uh, activities or written writing tasks so, ganun din ano makikita mo yung 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 silbi ng lengguwahe tama ba para maintindihan ang, ang isang konsepto ka may kay science man yan or kay math man yan. No? So again, uh, maraming salamat uh, Edna, no? uh, Ma'am Edna Kalyanta ng Elementary Mathematics Group ng UP Nismed sa pagbabahagi, hindi lamang ng kwentong ito, si Mausisang Munting Sisi, kundi sa pagbabahagi din ng kung paano natin gagawin sa pagtuturo, o gagamitin sa pagtuturo itong Uh, kwentong nandito sa atin ngayon. No? Ang husay din ng pagka-render ni Maria, no? may mga poses at sinasabi, mag- magka-count, tapos isa-isa, tapos mag uh, skip counting, tapos mag-repeat ad. No? Ang ganda, ang husay din. Ano? Yan. So, sana nga may mga natutunan yung mga uh, ka-science at ka-math teacher natin na nandito ngayon. Ingan kaya natin sila ng komento o feedback dito sa mga kwento nito. Teaching, science, and mathematics through storytelling. Ano po ang naging experience ninyo? Ano po yung pwede ninyo uh, gawin simula ngayon? Maghahanap kaya kayo ng mga libro na nandyan sa tabi-tabi ninyo? Nandyan na? Meron kayong science dyan sa libro na yan. Meron kayang math dyan sa libro na yan. No? Kasi itong si CCU at si Serenaders ay talagang ginawa sila para maging supplementary material sa pagtuturo. So, klaro yung, yung purpose at saka yung content na isasali. Pero, ang mga iba pang mga libro na nandyan naman sa paligid lang natin ay baka may mahanap tayong science at math. At ito yung mga libro na 
na baka usually ay uh, nagiging accessible sa mga estudyante at sa mga kapwa guru. Ayan, Ma'am Sel, sabi ni Sir Pinyo, no? Oh. Storytelling is an effective strategy in teaching because it stirs up the curiosity and imagination of children. It also allows the learners to express their thoughts and feelings. Tama, Sir Minyan. Yeah. Si Sir Wilfred, ah, si Sir Pidonio, sabi niya maganda rin sana kung pwede siya i-write, i-rewrite using the mother tongue in other places, like in Kalbayog Samar. Sir Pidot, i-project niyo po. <laughs> Tama. <laughs> Oo, pwede naman yan eh, di ba? Sa MTV, MLE ba? Oo, kaya nga ginawa namin isang English na story at saka na binasa sa English at isang story na binasa din sa Filipino. Kasi alam natin sa lower grades, no? MTV, MLE pa rin talaga tayo. At sinusuportahan natin yun. Yun, sigo, suggestion ni Sir, oh. Hindi naman siya mahirap ma gawin palagay ko, sir. Kasi maigsi lang naman yung kwento at yung mga sentences ay maigsi lang din. Apo. Okay, uh, so ipagpatuloy nyo lang po ano, ang pagsulat nyo ng mga komento ano, uh, sa ating chat box. <clears throat> Comment your answers po uh, sa chat box, mga kasama. Share with us your ideas and suggestions. We will be featuring some of the best and most relevant answers on our Facebook page tomorrow. Uh, buwas na po yan. Let us continue the conversation on uh, www.kasamateachers.ph Ulitin ko po, uh, ipagpatuloy nyo lang po ang pagsulat nyo ng mga komento sa ating chat box at bukas po, ipifeature natin ang ilan uh, sa pinakamagaganda po at pinakamahahalaga ng mga komento sa ating Facebook page. Uh, ang tabayanan nyo po yan bukas. Uh, magbibigay din tayo in a while ng link sa ating evaluation form. Uh, isang item po doon sa evaluation form ay nagtatanong kung kayo ba interesado na magkaroon ng chance na manalo. Hindi lamang ng isang storybook, hindi ng entire volume ng storybook. Yung isang volume po ng storybook kung saan nakapaloob si Sisiu at si Serenaders ay anim po ang lamang iba pang kwento na mayroon din iba pang content no sa science at sa, sa mathematics. So sagutin po ninyo 'yon uh, para po masali kayo magkaroon ng chance na mapadalhan no manalo at mapadalhan nung hindi lang isang book kundi ng buong volume compilation ng anim na story books. Wow. Nako. Oh, may <laughs> Gusto ko 'yan, ano Marcel, gusto ko 'yan. Ano? <laughs> Uh, oh, at magpapalabas po tayo, mamimigay po tayo ng limang uh, volume one na libro no? sa mga lucky na mananalo dito, na mabubola, no? makukuha doon sa uh, raffle natin. Uh, may comment dito, I never thought teaching science and math can be so interesting using reading materials through storytelling. Yan. Thanks for sharing. Yan, no? Uh, may Thank isa you, din tanong dito. Paano kaya ito? Pag, paano kaya itong setup na ito pag uh, senior high school naman ang um, uh, tinuturuan, no? Yan. Maganda yan. Magandang tanong. Parang gusto kong sagutin. Baka mayroon tayong Sige, gustong... Sige, ma'am, sagutin po natin. <laughs> Oh, Opo, yeah, uh, we can we can invite invite our other participants no to type in ideas. Paano kaya magagamit yung stories at saka storytelling uh, pag nasa senior high school yung mga estudyante? Alalahanin po natin yung storytelling ay pwedeng hindi lang pwedeng gamitin para sa concept development no. Pero baka pwede rin sa assessment. Yan din no, isang tama. isang perspective, no? Yan, pag-isipan natin. Sige nga, Mike, meron kang gustong i-share na probable na way to address that uh, question? Suggestion? Well, actually, Ma'am Sel, ano, uh, mag... Opo, opo. 
Maganda po ano na lumahok sila sa ating kasama teachers community. Sana po lahat ng mga kasama natin sa webinar session ngayong oh umaga God. ay lumahok po kasi libre naman po ang pag-sign up sa kasama teachers community. Marami pong mga resources dito at uh, hindi po natin alam baka ako sa mga uh, nanonood ng uh, webinar natin ngayon ay may na-develop na na mga kwento na pwede nating magamit sa senior high. Uh, may mga free resources po tayo sa kasama teachers. Kung halimbawa meron na po kayong na-develop, pwede nyo pong i-sumiti yan sa amin para maibahagi naman po natin sa iba po po nating mga kasama sa ating online community. Yes, yes. Oo, importante yun, ano? Kasi uh, yung UP NISMED ay kilala na bilang curriculum Uh, developers, no? may mga ginagawa talaga kami mga iba't ibang klaseng teaching learning materials, hindi lang print, no? pati non-print at meron din siyempre kaming mga radio programs at ito nga, yung online community, yung kasama teachers uh, community natin. Uh, pero gusto rin natin na makita yung mga gawa ng mga kaguruan, no? At even yung mga estudyante, eh, pwede naman ninyong i-share, no? Yung mga artifacts na ginawa ng mga estudyante nyo habang sila ay uh, nag-aaral o natututo dun sa mga klase ninyo, no? Uh, mar marami pong pagkakataon. Hindi po kailangan sobrang ganda, hindi po kailangan na-review ng todo-todo o na-edit ng todo-todo po yung mga gawa ninyo. Meron kayong PowerPoints dyan na gusto nyo i-share. Meron kayong uh, activity o activity sheet na gumana na sa klase niyo o gusto niyo gandahan pa, isumiti po niyo sa kasama teachers para po masilip at masubukan din ng mga iba pang mga science and math teachers at magkaroon po tayo ng pagkakataon na bumuo no, ng sarili nating mga resources na libre. No? Hindi kailangang bilhin. Libre. Ayan. So, ano pong hinihintay po natin, mga kasama? Uh, Mag-sign up na po tayo. <laughs> Mm -hmm. May mga nagtatanong, no? Uh, pwede kayong ma-request, Mike, i-display natin yung parang cover ng volume 1 ng uh, storybook ng, uh -huh. ng Miss Med. Ayan, ito po yung isang buong volume, isang buong libro po ito na anim ang laman. Actually, dalawa po ang volumes ng stories ng Miss Med for science and math. Meron volume 1 at saka volume 2. Kada volume po ay merong anim na kwento, no? Na siyempre, meron pong malinaw na connection sa curriculum, uh, lalo na sa science and math, sa mga lower grades especially, no? Pinakamataas na yata yung grade 5, no? Pero karamihan nasa lower grades. Dito po sa volume 1, nandito po si Curious Little Chick, nandito din si Serenaders of the Countryside, Nandito din si Sopas ni Tomas na ang laman naman ay tungkol sa health habits and carriers of diseases. Uh, nandito din si a turtle tail na tungkol naman sa animals. Uh, andito din yung the hidden sun. No? I think tungkol yata ito sa eclipse. No? Uh, Nagpo-cover din ng lesson on earth, moon, and sun. At nandito din si Anton Antukin at ang kalo. No, na ang laman naman ay konektado yes. sa energy. So ito po yung anim na kwento na laman nitong volume 1 na mapapanalunan po ng swerteng limang participants today. Yan. Kaya yeah. po, so, uh, ayan yan po natin sila no? na sagutan po yung uh, evaluation po natin kasi uh, doon po natin pipiliin yung mga na mananalo po ng mga storybooks na Parang lahat naman na nandito sa atin ngayon ay uh, kumbinsido no? sa effectiveness ng storytelling sa pagtuturo. Um, napakaganda pong pag-isipan natin um, isang tanong na pwede natin uh, pag-usapan. No? Isang bagay na pwede natin pag-usapan ay Uh, ano pa ang iba't ibang pamamaraan ng gamit ng storytelling sa inyong mga klase? So, in, in what different ways can you use storytelling or stories in teaching 
science or math class. So, pwedeng gano'n, no? Marami tayong pwedeng may share na idea dyan. At saka baka gusto din natin mag-share ano na yung mga stories na ginagamit ninyo sa inyong mga eskwel, mga klase. Ano na din yung mga stories na naipamahagi sa inyo ng inyong mga estudyante bilang pagpapakita, no? Bilang ebidensya na meron silang natutunan. Yan, pwede natin ituloy yun pag-uusapan natin sa Kasama Teachers PH. Yan pong ating community website. Again, we really oh, value your feedback, no? Opo, uh, muli Ma'am Sela, no? pasalamatan po natin ang ating uh, storyteller, ating napakahusay na storyteller, si yes. Marian Sassin. Marian Sassin, maraming salamat Marian. At uh, pasalamatan din natin Ma'am Sela, no? si Miss Edna Calyanta, si Ma'am Edna Calyanta, ang author po ng uh, Ang Mausisang Sisiw na binasa, na ibinahagi sa atin ni Marian. Napakahusay din na kwento. Uh, at saka si Ma'am Dulce Sebastian ano, na nagbahagi sa atin ng connection din ano, ng uh, story, uh, The Serenaders sa uh, uh, biology naman. Ayan, maraming salamat, uh, Arian, uh, Miss Edna at Ma'am Dulce. Thank you very much. At maraming With salamat pleasure. po. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga dumalo sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas. Maging po sa labas ng ating bansa, no? May nakita ko kaninang uh, galing sa Bahrain at meron din sa Pakistan, no? Uh, baka meron din dyan galing sa Japan, ano? Oo, na sumali sa atin ngayong umaga. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you po. Maraming salamat.